Um, so hi everyone, my name is Liz Eggleston and I run Course Report, which is a resource for researching which coding bootcamp is right for you. So we have a directory of every coding bootcamp around the world. We have over 4,000 alumni reviews and a blog with interviews with founders and instructors and students, um, everything you need to make a really informed choice. And every once in a while we get to do these really fun video interviews and actually connect with real alumni from schools and um, get to hear about their final project at their boot camp. So today I am speaking with two graduates from Thinkful's full-time boot camp, Robbie and Sierra. So hi Robbie, hi Sierra. Um, so you may know Thinkful for their flexible online courses. That's what they've traditionally done, but they also have this really cool fully remote online coding boot camp, and students get to take part from all over the country. So um, Sierra and Robbie created their final project together and they're gonna tell us all about it, it's called Book Kit, it's really cool, it's actually really um, helpful and useful for future boot campers and other people at Coding Boot Camp. So, um, Sierra and Robbie, welcome, thanks so much for joining. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, and congratulations to, on graduating from Thinkful, y'all graduated about a month ago, right? Right. Yep. Sweet, okay, cool. Well, perhaps you can just sort of start by introducing yourselves. Tell us what you were up to before you went to Thinkful. Um, Sierra, do you wanna go first? I'm sure you had a life before, before <laughs> Thinkful. A life before web development. Uh, so before I joined the uh, Thinkful team, I was getting a master's degree in library and information science from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I've always believed that people um, have a right to access information in the format that they, you know, prefer. And I thought the best way to achieve that was to become a librarian. You know, I still admire librarians around the world, but having gone through the master's degree, I think that my skills are more uh, suited towards web development and helping making help making apps uh, more accessible to people with disabilities and with you know just regular needs to help them access the information that they want to and book it is definitely an extension of that in that it allows you to access bookmarks in a more convenient manner that's amazing. Wait, so I love that you did library and in, in information sciences did you take like a computer science uh, was there a computer science aspect to that? Actually, um, so a mat the usually a library and information science is a master's degree uh, mm -hmm. program. Um, so I had to find something to ma uh, major in in undergrad, mm -hmm. and I actually wound up majoring in computer science. But that oh. had a more software engineer focus than web development. I did have a bit of experience, but it was rather limited. Um, I enjoyed the experience that I had in undergrad, and I got the experience to do a little bit more front-end work during um, my master's degree program. Cool. And you know that led me towards Thinkful and saying that I needed you know a bit more structured because I just came out of school, so I preferred preferred the structured format of learning to get a yeah. deeper dive. Robbie, did you have a similar experience? Did you have um, experience in computer science before? Did you take in classes before? Were you a total beginner? <laughs> Tell us about what you were up to before Thinkful. Yeah, um, so actually I, I studied architecture in college, um, cool. but I started college as an engineer and I took one computer science course uh, written in C++ six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, the only experience I've had with programming was um, like before I joined Thinkful, I was kind of doing Team Treehouse and Code Academy on the side, trying to, trying to learn on my own. Yeah. Uh, but didn't really get too far with that. Um, and so that's the experience I had before it. Uh, I was working at as a tech support uh, rep at a company called Thomson Reuters. Um, oh, cool. Just picking up phones and providing tech support for tax and accounting uh, companies. Um, and then I decided to take the, the full dive um, into web development and software development, yeah. That's awesome. So you were like technically inclined before but didn't have those like hard tech skills um, that you would need right. to be like a straight up web developer. That makes sense. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Fantastic. Well, so both of you did the full-time Thinkful Bootcamp, which I think is, it's one of their 
newer offerings, right? As opposed to the sort of traditional, like flexible part-time boot camps. Did you, since you were going to make like a full-time commitment, did y'all think about doing an in-person boot camp, or what sort of attracted you to the full-time remote online learning style? <laughs> Uh, for me, it was more a consideration of transportation. I'm visually mm -hmm. impaired, so it's very difficult for me to find uh, ways of getting around. I mean, if I'm in a city that has great public transportation, mm -hmm. then it's pretty easy. However, uh, here in St. Louis, it's a little bit more tricky, and I was worried that an in-person boot camp um, would be in a place that wasn't very accessible for me. That's really cool. Actually, yeah, that's awesome. That's really neat. Did you find that Thinkful had an emphasis on developing for um, people with disabilities? Like, were they able to sort of accommodate the, your needs? Oh, no, they were definitely open to accommodating for my needs. Uh, I'm very good at, you know, coming up with my own solutions, but they were definitely there to support me if I ever did have a problem. Uh, or an issue with any of the curriculum or the assignments. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, Robbie, how about you? Did you think about doing like an in-person, uh, you know, sort of immersive style boot camp? Yeah. So I, I was actually doing a, a bunch of like research and um, applying to a couple other ones, um, mm -hmm. a couple in San Francisco, one in New York. Um, and so kind of because you're based in Michigan, right? I'm based in Michigan, yeah, but okay. um, I, I'm from New York, and so I was kind of looking into New York so that I could just stay at home and then go into the city when I needed to and come home mm -hmm. for classes and stuff like that. One of the reasons why I went for a remote boot camp over an in-person one is I realized that I could kind of go about my life and not have to put it on pause mm -hmm. uh, for a few months because I knew that if I went to... Um, SF or New York, um, it would be really be like I remove myself from my life for about three months or so and then yeah. have to re-enter it um, after that. And so that gave me the flexibility of staying at home um, and also kept the cost down. So I know like, I mean, boot camps aren't cheap by any means, um, but also like it, the hidden costs of boot camps are like living expenses, which I didn't have to worry about as much because I just mm -hmm. stayed here. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's what you sort of meant by transparency. Did it, did the I mean, Thinkful is one of the only boot camps that has that transparent like jobs outcomes report. Did mm -hmm. that factor into anyone's decision at all? It did for me. A little bit. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking at another a couple other boot camps, and like they seem like they're a lot bigger in terms mm -hmm. of or have like more. Um, they've been around longer and stuff like that, which means yeah. they have much more like. Um, stable success or whatever like that but then yeah. um, what drew me to thankful was that because it's new they're very invested in the students they kind of have to be right because like sure. if they give a job guarantee and their students don't succeed then the company itself is screwed for sure uh, and so I think that I, I wanted to take a risk uh, with going with them because I knew that they would do everything possible to accommodate and to um, help their students succeed in the best way possible. Right, because is it both of your goals? Um, you graduated about a month ago. Are, are both of you looking for jobs as web developers now? Is that, was that the goal when you, when you signed up for Thinkful? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Awesome. I feel like it takes like a certain amount of discipline when you choose to learn online, um, regardless of how like great the platform is and great the learning platform is, like, a certain amount of discipline from yourself and like so self motivation to like put time aside to learn online and things like that. Do you have any tips? Like, what was your day to day schedule like? Did you make a dedicated space? Did you like learn in a different coffee shop every day? Like, what what is your sort of advice to staying on track in an online boot camp? So, oh, for me personally, it was. Definitely finding a quiet space, uh, you know, in my house where I felt comfortable, mm -hmm. but I knew that I wouldn't be disturbed. And to set aside, you know, 
time every day. Uh, I think what really what I really liked about the Thankful program was that we, you know, we worked, we pair programmed from um, say like nine in the morning till four thirty in the afternoon. And then we had a one-on-one -on -one mentor session with a experienced dev after that. And then we, you know, I tried to set aside time after that to do extra coding or extra practice. So definitely having time management and finding a quiet place worked for my learning style. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice to have like the accountability of knowing that you're going to be pair programming with somebody and that you have like appointments with people and it's not necessarily like self driven. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. Robbie, did you do the same thing? Like sort of dedicate a specific space to learning or, um, or did you be more flexible about it? I guess. Yeah. I think, um, all of us kind of worked from home or had a specific space for us. Um, thankful wasn't like, too self-driven in terms of even though it was online learning we had a pretty set schedule every day mm -hmm. um, and because of that that helped a lot because I think if I were just have to do it on my own it'd be very scattered take a lot more discipline but then because there was that structure there it definitely yeah. helped out um, but for me yeah, I had um, just a, a spot in my house I went to every day and cool um, on occasion, I would be at a coffee shop because of internet issues or something like that. But other than that, yeah, yeah mostly at home. Well, you mentioned, Sarah, you mentioned um, pair programming. How did y'all interact remotely, like with your instructor, with other students? How were you like actually technically, logistically pair programming, learning? Is there a learning management system? How did you, what was the sort of daily schedule like there? Uh, so Thinkful provides written curriculum that we were required slash uh, recommended to read um, over the night so that we were prepared for the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, in the morning, we had a one to one and a half hour uh, kind of workshop where a presenter went through the material, gave some examples, did some live coding, and then after that, we um, you know, we're paired up into usually teams of two or a team of three. Um, that was just due to the numbers. Um, they preferred teams of two. And we worked through um, more examples or we created a project. Now, the actual technical details of that is that we did, we had the workshop via kind of a video sharing, mm -hmm. very similar to Google Hangouts. And the pair programming was done through um, Screen Hero, which is a screen okay. kind of sharing application. So we followed the best practices for bear for pair programming and that someone was the driver and someone was the navigator. Now the driver was the person writing the code and the navigator was reading over their shoulder and kind of suggesting suggesting things to do and kind of researching syntax on the side. Um, so that was the actual technical detail. And what I really liked about the whole experience was not only the structure, but also the project oriented aspect of the program. Yeah. Uh, you know, with my background, I had, you know, a relatively solid foundation um, with the technical aspects, but I felt very lacking in project based, like mm -hmm. real world project uh, based experience. So I believe that Thankful did a great job giving me that other side of the coin. And when did y'all start your final project, your capstone project, which I'm assuming was BookKit, right? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it was. Um, actually, Book It was a combination of our first full stack application um, plus the additional three weeks that we had for the Capstone project. So we'd actually started Book It pretty early in our Thankful careers, um, okay. but had to set it aside for other projects. Uh, when it came time for our Capstone uh, we threw around a few ideas, but we eventually came back to book it and was like, we really want to improve this so that it can be useful to the community. Yeah. So, okay. Will you just, will you give us a rundown of what book it is? And I think Robbie, you're going to share your screen, right? And show right. us the actual application. Um, yeah. 
but feel free to also explain uh, as you go. We'll still be able to, you know, hear you. But if you click that little green button at the top of your screen, then you'll be able to screen share. Yeah. Um, cool. So do you want to explain just really quickly what Bookit does uh, and, yeah, how, how users sort of interact with it? Yeah, so Bookit um, was birthed out of our, like, need we saw of being able to have these, like, uh, online resources and being able to share those within between us as book, uh, bootcamp students. Okay. Um, we traditionally did it through Slack, um, yeah. but Slack has, like, a limit to how many things you – or how many messages it, it stores until they start deleting uh, messages um, for free Slack groups and stuff like that. And so this right. one – um, so during our experience, a lot of resources that we had were either just poorly organized or they were, um, they were just eaten up by this, by Slack. Um, and so we decided we wanted to build this. And so, um, here, here's book it. Um, it's built so that you can kind of put all your bookmarks in here and be able to organize and search to them really easily as well as share them between people. Um, so that you don't have to worry about that as much and be able to access a lot of those online resources. Um, and so some of the features are listed out here. You can share folders, upload screenshots, um, real-time search and all that. Um, and so that's our splash page. And when we go into here, we, we wanted to have um, login with GitHub because uh, we realized as GitHub, bootcamp students were always going to be using GitHub. Yep, um, cool. But let's sign in here with our demo account. Was doing like OAuth through GitHub a tough challenge for y'all, or did you figure it out? Um, we, good, Sarah. So we actually um, we considered doing Auth O uh, authentication, but we eventually went with a third party uh, called Auth Zero. Now okay. this is a kind of framework that allows you to integrate it into your own apps and um, prov it provides that uh, kind of login menu um, and an, it's a really easy way of setting up third party like authentication with GitHub, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and it uses JWT tokens, which are uh, JavaScript web tokens to communicate between the front end and the back end. Cool. I love that course report is a resource in Bucket. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, so you had about three weeks to plan this. How did you go about planning the the project out? And does Thinkful emphasize any type of like specific project management? Are you learning like agile development or, or something specific like that? And did you sort of adhere to that throughout the project? I think because of our time restrictions. Um, like the whole agile uh, development style wasn't what we stuck to in terms of like mm -hmm. test-driven development. Um, thankfully for BookKit specifically, like Sierra mentioned, we worked on it. Uh, we had like a version one already done by um, in like week eight or nine mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. of our course. And because of that, we were able to kind of think through functionality and between the end of that version one to the point where we started a capstone was um, we had gone back and forth of what we would want to um, have this app do. Um, so that's kind of how we did it. We tried using Trello for project management. We didn't actually stick to that very strictly, um, but we just had kind of open communication through Slack and um, we could ring each other up anytime during, with Screen Hero or with our um, video sharing um, and kind of touch base. That having been said, um, we did spend a lot of time planning, uh, kind of writing up a really thorough readme file for our GitHub page with all of like things that we wanted to d see in the project and kind of mm -hmm. deadlines and also uh, kind of user stories that we wanted to fulfill. Um, so yeah. we spent a lot of time ahead of, you know, before we even wrote a single line of code planning things out. So when you click on one of those resources, does it go to that website? So it'll take you to um, a more detailed. Cool. Um, and so in here, it'll have the tags of folders, a description of it, 
um, as well as the link. And so you'd have to hit the link in order to go to um, the, the actual resource. Um, we okay. wanted to have it like a, a detailed view so that like if we were to say this was a, um, oops, say we were a React, right? Mm -hmm. And we had learned a bunch of stuff about React, we can add more okay. um, to it saying like, I don't know, splits UI into components for their popularity. Um, it's submit and then have kind of like a, um, mm -hmm. you could add to the description and take away from it um, as cool. you need. Mm -hmm. And then are you sharing that with, is it like collaborative in any way or um, is it like a per your personal sort of storage? So we have it where you can actually share it. Um, wow, okay, cool. Yeah, and so awesome. if we go to our managed folders, we have a coding. This folder is shared. Mm -hmm. um, and so anything I add to this coding um, folder will be shared across multiple um, That's so cool. People. It, yeah, so. It, it seems like you actually got a good amount of functionality into Book It before, uh, before the boot camp was over. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about like the technologies that went into building it um, and what you sort of had to learn as you went? Was there something that you learned through the project that was not part of the thankful curriculum and you just sort of had to learn <laughs> on your own? Many, many things. <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sarah, you want to talk about the back end, maybe? Okay, so I was in charge or was in charge of the entire back end, including designing and implementing the database, which wow. we use Postgres for. And the Node.js server. Uh, now, the Node.js server basically uh, display, or because we're using Heroku, it has to serve the static pages, and um, it acts as the main API for mm -hmm. accessing the information. Um, I would think one of the biggest lessons that I learned while designing was the back end was trade-offs. Uh, trade-offs between what I thought was a clean Re relational database design and what the front end needed. Uh, mm -hmm. I also spent a lot of time trying to optimize queries for Postgres, and that kind of helped me dig deeper into Postgres as a database management system. Um, I mean, I have queries that are really, really long, but they do what I need to do in one query instead of having to make multiple calls to the database. Amazing. Okay, so so Postgres for the database on the back end, um, on the front end, uh, what what did y'all use? What like technologies and libraries did you use to build the front end out? Yeah, so with the front end, um, we worked with React and mm -hmm. Redux as our main um, front end framework. Cool. Um, we worked with uh, we used the less precompiler for CSS. Mm -hmm. um, using Webpack to kind of bring it all together to one file. Um, and so those are the main uh, front-end technologies that we used. How much help were you getting from your thankful instructor and mentors uh, throughout the project? Did you feel like you were able to, did you do like a stand-up with them every day? Were they a part of the project at all? What did you like go to them for help for? So we had okay. a, a stand-up every day. Um, cool. With our, with our um, advisor person, so our instructor kind of was more so an advisor than a, a TA at this point. Um, mm -hmm. They were kind of there to aid, um, kind of help us think through certain problems. Um, and I think that changed a little bit as we started the boot camp to the point we got to the capstone, where before they were added, they were more like teacher aides and instructors and stuff like that. While this, in this case, they were more like. Um, I guess like advisors and like yeah. guidance in, in the direction we wanted to take. Yeah. That's cool. Who was, did you have like one teacher throughout the course? No, we got, uh, no, we had the experience of being able to talk to multiple uh, developers that are currently working in the field so they could share like, 
current up-to-date information on what they were working with and advice. Uh, we did have one mentor for the first half of the program, so you got to know them, and they got to know you and you know the areas that you were struggling with. After that, uh, we had something called the Flex Week, which was a really interesting experience. It allowed you to go off and learn a framework or a library of your own choice uh, and kind of build a project and present it at the end of the week, uh, which was a really interesting experience. Uh, we got a specialized mentor for that, depending on what we chose to learn. And after that, uh, as Robbie said, the people or the people that had been our instructors throughout the course kind of took a more advisory role um, in helping us. So. Uh, other than the mentor for the three-week capstone, uh, we didn't have an official mentor after the second half of the course. Okay. Yeah. So during the course, we had um, two like main instructors that mm -hmm. would teach the the like workshops every morning, um, and they kind of alternated, and then um, two TAs that would um, be like on call while we're pair programming that we can call on anytime we needed help or we got stuck on something um, and they alternated. So any given day we had one instructor and one TA. Cool. That's amazing. Um, so Sierra, I love that you had mentioned earlier about like really getting involved in web development in order to make technology more um, accessible. Did that mm -hmm. motivation sort of carry into designing Book It and, and doing this project or did you learn anything like specific about that um, about that goal while you were building Book It? Definitely my main motivation for the project was to help people access this information mm -hmm. easier. I mean, during the project, I kept struggling with bookmarks in Chrome. I, I think I had over a thousand at one point, oh um, just things that I wanted to look at or come back to later for mm -hmm. reference. And Chrome's bookmark manager is just really bad at letting you search and recognize things. Yeah. When I went back and tried to organize them, I was like, I don't remember that link, especially with the title that Chrome usually gives it. Yeah. Um, so Book It was to help you know, increase organization and help people access that information later on. Because mm -hmm. what else, I mean, why else make a bookmark if you can't find it later? Totally. Um, as for web accessibility, uh, in general, um, there were we did make some. Uh, we definitely tried to follow best practices mm -hmm. um, by using forms and elements like that. I, like I said before, though, I was mainly focused on the back end during this project's development. Yeah, yeah, that's just something I'm so curious about, and I think that. Um, it's something that boot camps really can like teach well, like have an opportunity to teach and like mm -hmm. make people aware of. So I think that's really awesome. What are the um, future plans for Book It? Are are you going to keep working on it? Is um, th this is live? So like, are are anyone watching this could go use Book It, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Well, we will um we'll include a link in the description once we publish this so that everyone can um, can go check it out, especially all of our boot campers who are, who are watching. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can switch back to video now if you want. Or if, if there's anything that we didn't cover about Book It, do you want to um, point anything else out? Um, I would say the only, the, the big feature that we wanted to do was have folders that are shareable because um, mm -hmm. we, we thought we could have like a, like cohort to folder or something like that and have that right. shared. Um, and so anything I add to that could be added to something else. So if I go in here, um, share it with another account. Do things get tricky with like permissions and it, it, not giving people access to your entire <laughs> We did have a several days worth of kind of brainstorming to set down the rules of permissions mm -hmm. and who was able to delete what and when and how. So it, it, it was it was a mind tweezer. Or it was yeah. a mind teaser, but it, yeah. it was an interesting challenge. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, cool. So we, okay, so we have this bookmark, cool. and if we log into our second demo account, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this cohort two folder is available, and also the bookmark is available as well. Awesome, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I think that's actually that's like an extra layer of functionality that doesn't really need to go into a you know bootcamp final project, but it's like extremely impressive that it is. Have you have y'all had? Um, I'm curious about sort of like career you know outcomes and prospects so far since you've graduated. Have you, I'm assuming that Bookit is like part of your portfolio, you have it on your GitHub. Um, is, have you like talked about it with employers? Is it like impressing people? Um, is it helping strengthen that portfolio? Sarah, you wanna go first or help me too? Um, I've had a few uh, interviews so far, kind of, um, I, I I got sick right after graduation, so it's been a little bit of a slow process. Um, but yeah, definitely, people seem very impressed by it. Uh, it's a great project to illustrate both my passion for information and my technical ability. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does has thankful since you've um, since you've graduated. How has career support um, gone for you? Are you still like meeting with your mentors, your advisors, or a careers team? How is Thinkful sort of supporting that process? So that's been pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. That's one of the things that um, I think after graduating, after going through it, I'm very confident in um, recommending Thinkful to others. Is like so I've had um, a few interviews and. Something sometimes it would be like, um, so for one uh, job I wanted to apply for, I saw that they needed rail a Rails developer, mm -hmm. um, and we we're a JavaScript bootcamp, so we learn JavaScript, Node as our backend. Um, and so when I wanted to learn Java, uh, ra Rails, um, I just messaged our program manager, and he just added that curriculum to my account, and I just learned oh. side. Um, same thing happened with Angular 2. I tried to learn that for another interview. And um, while they don't have like a course for that yet, they just hooked me up with a mentor. And I was able to meet with a mentor right away, um, get talking about that kind of stuff, as well as they, they pair us with a, a career mentor mm -hmm. um, after we graduate. And we kind of work with them to for more of the non-technical stuff, mm -hmm. like cover letters and resume and all that stuff. And that's, that's been awesome. I think Sierra and I both have the same uh, mentor and I think working with her, it's been really good um, and helpful in kind of like packaging ourselves or marketing ourselves really well. So we don't have to, we don't have to worry about that stuff necessarily mm -hmm. and just work, focus on technical stuff. So for me, the, the career support has been kind of the sell point of, of Thinkful. Yeah, that sounds like a huge resource. And especially I love that they're so open with, um, you know, other content that can like sort of further your learning. I feel like Thankful kind of has like a treasure trove of, <laughs> of content already, you know, already like available. So that's so cool that, that you have access to that. That's really neat. And they're constantly uh, improving that storage yeah. of knowledge and updating it to conform to the latest trends and standards. So cool. That's amazing. Um, any advice? I want to let y'all get back to your lives. Um, anything that we didn't cover or advice that you have to anybody who's thinking about doing an online boot camp, a coding boot camp in general, or even like considering thankful? I think y'all have given a ton of insight into the entire experience, but anything that we totally missed? Um. I think for me, one of the, I guess, big sell points I would give Thinkful um, is, yes, the career support and stuff like that, but also um, access to mentorship is incredible. Um, like, because Thinkful doesn't have to pay for, like, brick and mortar kind of stuff, like a lot of other um, boot camps have to because they're in person. Mm -hmm. I think they could spend more money on mentors and people that are actually working. And so these are, mm -hmm. we're paired with people that aren't just um, 
there for academia's sake, but there as as web developers that are currently working um, that fit us in around their schedules as well. And they're literally all around the world. Like my mentor, he was based in the UK. Um, oh, cool. Both of our instructors were in Europe, actually. Um, one of our um, TAs was based in Australia, so he was waking mm -hmm. up at like 3 a.m. to help <laughs> help with our, our, our stuff, which is insane. That is um, insane. So, <laughs> He's still awake. Such yeah, commitment. Like, anytime we need help, we can just ping someone on Slack. Um, mm -hmm. They're willing to offer it. I know some, some people that I've talked to are afraid that um, an, an online one doesn't give them the same kind of um, leverage or or the, the networking possibilities. And yeah. that may be kind of true, but at the same time, it allows you to, um, in the location you are, be taught those networking skills and all those things and utilize those in the market you want to be in rather than in a different city that you're not familiar with and you don't want to go to necessarily. Yeah, I totally agree. Different advantages for, um, for you know, in-person versus online. But yeah, that makes, that makes complete sense. You basically get the network and the job skills where you actually want to get a job. So that's really neat. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. Well, y'all, thank you so much for chatting with me today and showing us Book Kit. Um, it's fantastic. It's so cool that you actually chose to create something that kind of gives back to the bootcamp community. And it also looks really neat. And I love that Course Report is a resource on it. So <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, anyways, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, good luck in the job hunt. Uh, keep us updated, and we'll update this uh, blog post when we put this on our blog with mm -hmm. where y'all landed jobs because we definitely want to know. Um, okay, so thanks so much for joining us and thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.